Okay. Good morning or good day, everyone. <laughs> uh, it's a pleasure for me to see you all here and to introduce to you our a good friend of Igas, a good friend of myself, Professor Jeffrey Braithwaite from Sydney, Australia, one of the very important researchers in the accreditation field and in many other fields in the world, who is going to give us a talk on the topic, what is hot current in accreditation? And uh, well, with these words of introduction, I'll hand over to you. I can tell you as a practical information that there will be no PowerPoint show to have this these handouts, and it will be a talk between you and Jeffrey about what this says and Jeffrey has to tell us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carson. Thank you for the invitation to uh, come and work with ECAS again. It's a pleasure being in Denmark, and it's a pleasure being uh, working with ECAS. Um, who has heard me talk before? So a few people. Some other people, you must not have heard me when I've been to ECAS before, or you're relatively new, is that right? You'd be in those categories? Okay, so, um, so uh, um, if, if you are new, or, or, or you haven't talk, heard me talk before, you, you should know that ECAS is a very important organisation. It is very important, not just for Denmark, but ECAS um, is responsible for a relatively new accreditation programme, and it has been very important across the world for us to see the development of an excellent accreditation program. And so people like me who are researchers who do international research have followed ECAS and its developments and the innovations that it has produced uh, with great interest. And so you should be proud of working for such a, a very important and good organisation. There you go, I came all the way from Sydney, Australia <laughs> <laughs> to tell you that you should be proud of the organisation you work for. Isn't that good? So, um, as Kassin said, I'm a researcher. I run um, a, a research institute, and I'm very interested in uh, how the health system works. So this has been my lifelong work. So I like to say to people that I don't do research to splice genes or work out the molecular basis of diseases. I don't try and cure cancer. I do research that's much more important than that. <laughs> I do research that tries to figure out how can we improve the health system so that patients get better care and safer care and higher quality care. That's my mission statement. But that's your mission statement too, isn't it? Isn't that what you're hoping to do? Improve the care that's delivered to citizens and patients in Denmark. So we already have a connection. They say when you give a talk, always have a connection to your audience. I hope I'm making one. So we thought, Kasten and I, um, uh, when, uh, when I was asked to give this talk, that's the title of the talk that they gave me. I thought, this is going to be hard. This is a tough title. What's hot or current in accreditation? So that made me work very hard to think through what would I present to you. And we also thought that maybe I shouldn't shine slides today. What I should do is have a chat with you and give you the presentation ahead of time so we can work our way through it. So is that okay? We'll have a PowerPoint-free morning. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty good. So let me just tell you a little bit about myself and my uh, institute and then talk about what's hot in accreditation. And the most things that are hot in accreditation is the research that we've been doing to understand it. Because we're one of the leading groups in the world who research accreditation. Probably because we're one of the few groups in the world that are research <laughs> accreditation. <laughs> they say you should always find a niche in your career that's a very important place to occupy. And so it's one of the things we do, though. We've been doing this for um, more than 10 years, researching accreditation, uh, uh, not only in my own country, but across the world. So I'm, I'm, I'm the director, I'm the foundation director of the Australian Institute of Health Innovation. So I have a management job. I run an organisation with about 100 people in it. But my, that's, my, that's my night job. My day job is I'm a researcher. <laughs> I really love doing research. Um, and so that's a little bit about me. We have four centres within our institute.
And why I'm saying this is, you might be interested in this talk, but you might be not interested in this talk, you might be interested in other things to do with the health system. In which case, we produce a lot of papers. We produce maybe 150 papers a year, and we do maybe $10 million worth of research grants a year of funding. So if you want to also track some of the other work that we do, you can come onto our website, and there's lots of free, uh, free research. We're a publicly funded research group, so it's free. It's available to you. So I run a centre, the Centre for Clinical Governance Research, interested in quality improvement, policy into practice, how do you improve the safety of care delivered to patients. Uh, Enrico Kawira uh, runs uh, a centre, the Centre for Health Informatics, and he does e-health. He's very interested in how do you enable the health system through informatics. Ken Hillman's an intensive care specialist, and he's interested in medical emergency teams and uh, death and dying. And he still works as a researcher, but also as an intensivist. Uh, and he and I, I go to his intensive care unit once a month, and he and I just hang out watching things happen. Very interesting. It's very interesting. So if you're in ECAS, by the way, and you get the chance sometimes to go into the health system if you're not a clinician, or sometimes return to the health system if you are, and uh, sort of think through what's happening at the, at the, at the, at the coal face, the clinical coal face. That's very important to map back to the work you do. Having an understanding of what's going on actually in clinical care being delivered or reminding yourself about that is very important. That's what I do because I write a lot of papers about the health system. And it's really important for me to understand how the health system is working. So I spend some of my time back in the health system. So I'm not in, do you know that phrase, like in an ivory tower? I try not to be always in an ivory tower. Um, and uh, Ken Hillman says something interesting, by the way. Ken Hill Hillman says something very interesting. He says, they should give me less funding. They should give me less funding. Why would an intensive care specialist say they should give me less funding? By the way, have you ever heard anybody else in the health system say they should give me less money? <laughs> no? Why would an intensive care specialist say they should give me less money? Yes? Because he should have less patients. Yes. Why should he have? Because the care in the other ward should be better. They shouldn't be needing intensive care. That's a good point. He thinks that we should spend more of the health budget on palliative care. A third of the patients in a big intensive care unit uh, in a modern uh, hospital in an OECD country die uh, in intensive care. No intensive care specialist wants to die that way. You want to die quietly at home with your pain managed, surrounded by your family and friends. You don't want to die in an intensive care unit where they never turn the lights off and you're on a machine, but you're inevitably hurtling, toward, hurtling towards death. So he says they should spend less money on intensive care and more money on palliative care in Australia. So hence he says they should give me less funding. It's a very interesting point, isn't it? How do we spend the money in the health system wisely? Is it one of the themes in our research? And the fourth member of our group is Joanna Westbrook. She's an epidemiologist and she does research in medication safety. So if you want to be in touch with any of those people via me or want to get in touch with them directly, feel free to do so. They're doing very interesting research. Okay, so who's been to Australia? Vote. Fifteen percent of the people? See, I'm a researcher. I'm always estimating numbers, you know. Fifteen percent? Okay, okay. So there's a picture of Australia. It's actually a picture of the world. Do you notice what's in the middle of the world? <laughs> You've never seen the map drawn that way, have you? It's got Australia in the middle of the world. Who's been to Sydney of those people who've been to Australia? Everybody who's been to Australia should now put up your hands because it's almost impossible to go to Australia and not go to Sydney, correct? Sydney's a very nice place, isn't it? See, it's got giraffes and harbour, the Harbour Bridge and things like that. It doesn't really have giraffes, that's in the zoo. Here's a map of Australia and Denmark. is not to scale. <laughs> you know that, don't you? Here's some data on Australia and Denmark. So 
Australia has about four times the population of Denmark, but it's got a huge continent in which the population is spread out. So it's not like here, where I get on a train and go from, say, I don't know, Copenhagen to Aarhus, and I find there's population all over the place. In Australia, you can be in the bush and drive for a couple of hundred kilometres and never see a soul, never see a person. So it's this huge continent. And um, our GDP has... Uh, you're, you, you're a rich country, but our GDP has, GDP has exceeded your GDP. Do you know why? Because this huge continent is full of minerals and iron ore. We are definitely the lucky country. And we are mining that and selling it to China and India as fast as we can. So it means your carbon footprint is not as big as our carbon footprint. <laughs> we're creating most of the carbon uh, uh, in the world because we're selling so much to all the developing parts of the world. So enough about that. I'm going to try and do three things in this talk.